on this episode of California Superstars with the industry's biggest and brightest, 11-time Grammy winner and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, the legendary John Uncle Goldie Goldstein. From his humble beginnings in Chicago to moving out west to Los Angeles, California, where he befriended Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys and became their main and constant producer and engineer. After a consecutive nine weeks of holding the number one spot on Billboard's Top 10 with the Mamas and Papas, he was catapulted into industry stardom and became known as the man with the golden touch. We'll reflect on his bizarre friendship with the notorious family leader, Charles Manson, his outspoken and unwavering political opinions, his tumultuous marriage to the actress Ali McGraw, his fervor for the martial arts, and becoming one of only four people in history ever to achieve the level of 12th degree black belt. So Goldie, tell me about recording music in the 60s and producing artists versus recording and producing artists today. We didn't know what we were doing at the time, but in the recording industry, what you do can last forever. And I can always go back to it. I can warm my memories and refresh my spirits by playing what we had gone through, even though the people are long gone. Ryan Wilson from the Beach Boys would come down. He was sort of a neighborhood phenomenon. We all knew that they were going somewhere if they got a break. One day they asked me if, if I could help out. And, and they're producing, and it sort of fell into my lap, and they trusted me, and I consulted with people who knew what they were doing, and lined them up, and the rest is what we know, what happened to them. Now tell me about the first time you met Charlie. What was your impression? Well, we were down by the beach, uh, and he has, I said, he had these chicks, and we started talking and we uh, exchanged doobies and I remember we were having a party here and I decided that we should, we were going to use the jacuzzi and the, and the pool and I decided to go bare ass and before you knew it, everybody was romping around naked and unselfconsciously. And I felt, wow, what a nice thing to be a catalyst for something as natural as this, mm -hmm. including Charlie. Mm -hmm. He wasn't very well hung, by the way. He was like a scared turtle. It's never been confirmed. It sort of stayed out of the media. It was very hush-hush. But you and Mickey Ward flew to Texas to a Republican fundraiser for George W. Bush, spent your own hard-earned money, $500,000 cash, just to call him out and kick his ass. Is that true? Well, it was expensive as hell, but for the 15 seconds of my personal recollections, it was worth it. Mickey and I, he was... He was hard to control. He drank a hell of a lot. I, I wasn't that bad. But anyway, we go up there, and I get alone. There was a line of people, and I get alone with George Bush. I take his hand, and I really tried to squeeze the hell out of it, and I could see him feeling a little discomfort. And because of his expression, the Secret Service guys were looking a little suspicious. And I looked at him, and I said, you are a collection of obsolete responses, sir, and are unworthy to be president. Now, of course, nobody knew it or saw it, but I saw him wince, and I think the dullard actually felt the impact of what I was saying, because he was just propped up by, by Carl Rove. He was just a shallow, lifeless, bit of protoplasm that had to be electrified and activated by the people around him. He is the kind of a person that would interrupt your solitude without providing 